Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I've got a really fun, different video for you. We're going to be talking about Refer Brushes and their Kickstarter campaign, which is kicking off today, June 10th. And what I want to do today is uh, not only talk about their Kickstarter campaign, but I want to give you some detailed shots of all 15 brushes that are going to be offered, give you some information about the company in general. And I'm also going to be doing a demo using um, almost all 15 of the brushes, just so you guys can see them in action. What I'll do is um, have some timestamps down below if you want to kind of jump around. I'll also have a link to the Kickstarter campaign down below in my description box if you just want to go ahead and click over there. There's basically four different pledges, which I'll talk about a little bit more in depth in just a bit. But what I want to do is just talk about the company, talk about the brushes, get into the demo, and then we'll talk about the details of the Kickstarter campaign at the end. So you guys may have remembered that I went to Toronto a couple weekends ago and it was um, because of Refer Brushes. They invited me to go up there to be a part of their Kickstarter video and of course I had to go well one I was dying to meet the team they are the nicest guys in the entire world so I just had to meet them in person and I also had never been to Toronto before so I wanted to go check out the big Canadian city and it did not disappoint it is such a beautiful city and it's so clean I don't know if it's because I'm from New York, but I feel like every time I go to another big city, I'm like, it's so clean. But anyway, Toronto was beautiful, had such a great time. I would love to go back, but anyway, I digress. So I got to meet the team over at Refer, and this is a brush company that was started by three engineers. You know, when I first talked about their brushes many, many moons ago, and I was so impressed with the brushes, I thought they were great quality. I really didn't know much about the actual company at all, except that they were soliciting feedback, that they were really wanting feedback to kind of help them develop brushes going forward or to help them kind of really hone their collection. And when I learned that the creators of Refer Brushes was three engineers, three guys that don't wear makeup, um, that know nothing about makeup, I was I was really intrigued. I was like, I have to meet these guys. So their story basically is that they just really fell in love with the craft and the craftsmen surrounding brushes and makeup brushes in Kumano, Japan. They really, really fell in love with the history of it, the artistry that's involved, the dedication of the workers, and how much pride they take in making these brushes. And they just knew that they wanted to be a part of this community, that they wanted to kind of like spread this love. I can't tell you how much that resonated with me. As you guys know, I'm a hand knitwear designer, so I'm really, really into craftsmanship. And it's one of the reasons why I love good makeup brushes so much. I mean, aside from the amazing performance, I really really, really love the craftsmanship of Japanese handmade brushes. So anyway, it was so great to meet them. And if you don't know anything about this brush company, they are existing already. They have a website and I'll leave that down below in my description box as well. And um, they do have a core collection of brushes, but what they wanted to do was, you know, extend the line and learn more about brushes. So when you ordered a brush, you were able to also order prototypes. And these were brushes that they had created in Japan and were just wanting some feedback, like, do you like this brush? How would you use this brush? Is this good? Is this bad? Do you think this is a good addition to your makeup brush collection? And all that's all they wanted. They were sending out these brushes for free, these handmade natural haired brushes for free just to get your feedback. And I thought that them turning like their ignorance into this business model was so brilliant. I just I just loved it and I love them. So they are really, really kicking off their business now with this Kickstarter campaign. And um, like I said, before we get into the whole campaign, what I wanna do is actually show you the brushes and then show you them in action on my face. So before we jump into um, the individual brushes, I just wanna mention that all of these brushes are handmade in Japan. I think I mentioned that a couple times already, but they're also all made of natural undyed goat hair, which makes them incredibly versatile because you can use them with powder and cream products. So there are 15 brushes altogether. There's five brushes that are part of the core collection and 10 brushes that are part of the bespoke collection. So the core collection is a collection that the refer team felt really strongly in needing to design. It is a collection of brushes that they think 
a makeup artist all the way down to the everyday user could use to create an entire look. They would only need these brushes. So there's five brushes that are part of this core collection. And then the bespoke collection is 10 brushes. And these brushes are a little bit more specific. They address like more specific needs in the community. And these brushes were definitely created based on your feedback, based on makeup artist feedback and Anyway, I'm really excited to show them to you. So let's go ahead and start with um, the core collection. So that's the first five brushes I'm gonna be talking about. So the first one, number one, this is a flat shader eyeshadow brush. And I really enjoy this brush. It was a little bit different for me. The hair length for these brushes are a little bit longer than what I'm used to in brushes that are you know, generally shaped like this, but it actually works really, really well with cream products, this longer hair length, because it lays down the product really nicely, really evenly. So that's brush number one. Brush number two is another flat shader, but this is a flat shader with shorter hairs. They're stiffer, it's a little bit denser. So this brush is great for like metallic shades, shades that are really hard to uh, pick up, or if you wanna use a powder shadow wet, this is a great brush for that. Brush number three is a great pencil brush. You can see it's very, very pointy at the tip, but because the hair lengths are just long enough, the tip isn't very pokey. It's not gonna stab you. It's very, very soft at the tip, but because it's so pointed, it still gives you some control. Brush number four is an angled cheek brush, and I have to admit, I think this is my favorite brush out of the core collection. I love the shape of this brush. It's angled, it fits right underneath your cheekbone if you want to um, contour your face. For a cheek brush, at least for me, it's a little bit on the smaller side, so it's great if you want a very specific product application. It's, it's really, really great, especially if you want like a really nice strong contour, it's wonderful. And then brush number five is a cheek brush. This is a little bit more of a traditional cheek brush. It is great, again, for both cream and powder cheek products. I really like using this for cream blushes, actually. It lays product down very, very nicely. And I really like using this for bronzer all over my face as well. So those are the five uh, core brushes. Let's go ahead and talk about the 10 bespoke brushes. So the first brush is brush number 11, and this was brush number six that was only available in the collection set on their site. This is a giant powder brush, and it is a phenomenal, phenomenal powder brush. It really blooms the more you use it, the more you wash it, and I've just loved it more and more the more I use it. So that is brush number 11. Brush number 12 is a small domed brush. This brush is great for uh, blending out eyeshadows, for softening harsh edges, but I've come to really enjoy using this brush for cream shadows. Brush number 13 is a great detail brush. It's great for eye work. It's great for um, like carving out your eyebrow if you want. It's a wonderful detail brush. Brush number 14 is like a little bit larger than brush number 13. And I've been enjoying actually using this for concealer under my eyes. And I will talk a little bit more about that in my demo. Brush number 15 is like the very typical blending brush. Brush number 16 is like a larger version of brush number 15. It also has a much pointier top, and I really like using this brush to lay down a lot of product all over my eyelid. Brush number 17 is a small kabuki style brush, and this is amazing for cream products. I use this for foundation, for cream highlight, cream blush, cream contour. You'll see it in action in my demo, but this is such a great little kabuki brush. Brush number 18 is like an all-purpose face brush. I really enjoy using this to set concealer down around my eyes, and I'll also demo that for you a little bit later. Brush number 19 is like a larger version of 18, but it's also oval shaped versus it being round. So this is another great um, cheek brush. And I know after speaking to a couple makeup artists, they actually really enjoy using this for contour. And the last brush is number 20. This is a fan brush, of course, great for any sort of light lay down of any products. You'll see me use this as a highlighter brush. So those are close-ups of all 20 of the brushes. So let's go ahead and jump into the demo of all of these brushes. The only two brushes 
Well, I, I do use this brush. This brush number 12, um, I don't use this with cream shadows, which is how I really like to use this brush, but I do demo kind of blending out any of the harsh edges that I have around my eyeshadows. Um, and then the other brush that I don't get to demo is brush number 19. But again, this is a brush that I really enjoy for cheek products. And I've heard a lot of makeup artists talk about how they like using this for contour. So that's brush number 19. But let's go ahead and jump into the demo where I show you all the other brushes in action. I'm gonna start with brush number 17 to apply my foundation. This is the one that is like a kabuki style brush. It's on the smaller side, uh, which is great. It makes it very versatile. For foundation, it makes applying the foundation um, maybe a little bit longer. I think maybe generally I would use a larger brush for this, but this comes in really handy, which I'll show you in a second when you wanna use any other kind of cream products like bronzers, blush, highlighter, anything like that. So to have one of these brushes in this style, in this collection, this is, I think, the perfect size. I think this was the right size to go with. So I'm just applying my um, Sicily Tinted Sunscreen Cream. I'll list everything um, that I'm using down below in the description box in case I forget to mention it since I'm kind of focusing on the brushes. And what I've noticed about this brush is I don't feel like it eats up a lot of product, maybe because of its small size, maybe that's another benefit to having a smaller size, but I really don't feel like this brush eats up a lot of product. All right, so there is the foundation applied with this brush blended it in seamlessly, and it didn't suck up a lot of product, which I love. All right, let's go ahead and apply some cheek products with this brush. I want you guys to see this brush in action when I'm, you know, kind of focusing it on a smaller area. So uh, since I'm gonna use this brush for everything, I'll start with highlighter, since that's the lightest. I'll do highlighter, blush, and contour. All right, so I picked products that were gonna be like all different forms kind of. So I have a highlighter stick, um, a blush that's in a little pot, and then I have a cream contour. So let's go ahead oh, and use this Guerlain Terracotta highlighting stick. I have it in the shade Nude. And what I'm gonna do with this brush is actually just kind of run it across the top here and then kind of pounce that where I want it. So this brush is great for like picking up product and like kind of stamping it onto your skin. Uh, we're gonna do basically the same thing with the blush. This is the Clay de Peau Cream Blush in number four. And I'm just gonna go right into the pot here and do basically the same thing. I'm just going to pounce. I'm just gonna use it in circular motions here on the apples of my cheeks. Really get those nice and rosy. And then for the contour, I'm actually gonna apply it straight to my face and then blend it out with the brush so you guys can kind of see this brush in action in all different kinds of ways. So I think I still have some stuff on this, so I'm just going to, yep, plenty of product on the little sponge tip. So I'm just going to dab it in the hollows of my cheeks. And now I'm gonna take the brush and I'm going to use circular motions and just buff that out. So next I wanna share with you something that I learned from the makeup artist that was there in Toronto with the Ruffer team while I was there. We were talking about brushes 13 and 14 and um, I basically you know, wasn't sure how I would use these brushes. They're a little bit small on the smaller side and I don't do that much you know, detailed work. And so I asked him, you know, well, how would you use these brushes? Because he was talking about how much he liked this brush and he said, oh, well, I love applying concealer with it. And I was like, wow, I would have never ever thought to do that. So while we were there, I used both of these brushes for concealer actually and they were great. So I wanna demonstrate that for you guys today. I have my Armani Stretchable Power Concealer here. So I'm just going to actually wipe the wand onto the back of my hand. And I'm gonna pick up some of the concealer with the brush number 14. This is the larger of the two. And I really like this technique because one, you guys can probably see, you can just add a really nice light layer of concealer instead of going straight in with the doe foot. And you really avoid um, putting too much concealer down. That is always a fear of mine. If I put too much concealer down, and I think, I think most people experience this, it just gets way too cakey and 
uh, drying looking and it really ages the under eye. And so I really, really appreciated this technique that he shared because it really lays it down in such a nice, light, even layer. And then some on my upper eyelid. And then I get to the point where, you know, there isn't much product left on here. And then I'll go in and blend out. Of course, you can go in with your finger. I know I'm someone that generally doesn't like to use my hands <laughs> when I apply makeup. But when it comes to concealer, I really like using my fingers. I know it's just the heat of my fingers. And I just like to press the product in. So I'll just finish it off with my finger. But using the brush, I feel like, really takes out a lot of the blending work because you're already putting it down in such a light way. I just love it. I was so happy that he shared that technique with me. All right, there is the concealer applied. Let's go ahead and move on to powder. So there's two different brushes that I like to use from this collection um, in terms of powdering my face. The first one is brush number 18. This is the one that I like to use to set my concealer like underneath my eyes and um, basically around my eyes. So a technique that I really like that I learned from a makeup artist probably 20 years ago, I think at like the Giorgio Armani counter possibly or the Chanel counter I can't remember but anyway this is like the rolling technique which I really like it's a technique that I feel like is kind of in between using a powder puff to kind of press and roll or just kind of brushing powder on the application ends up being a little bit in between those two I feel like the press and roll sometimes a little too heavy sometimes I feel like just the brushing of the powder on is a little bit too light so this is what I like to do and this brush number 18 is perfect for it so I will just take the brush and make sure that I coat it with powder like all the way around since I'm gonna be rolling it and I will take the brush I'll start from the inner corner and the reason why I like this brush is because it fits like right there underneath my eye and I can roll it towards the outer part of my eye just following you know my lash line and then I just roll off and I do that until I I'm satisfied but it's such a nice even way of applying the powder without it looking too cakey but it's very effective too you saw me I just rolled it once and then I kind of went back and made sure all the edges were kind of blended out and that's it and then I'll take any excess and just kind of brush it over my lids there anywhere I may have placed the concealer so this brush number 18, I really love to use to set concealer down around my eyes um, using that press and roll technique. And then there's brush number 11. So this was previously brush number six in their collection. So this brush number 11 is just, it's great for powder. So, so I'm just kind of tapping it in here, picking up enough powder, shaking off the excess, and I'm just gonna powder a bit over all that cream product area on my cheek. And there's something about this brush, I just love using it in this whipping motion. Usually with um, like squirrel hair brushes, I like using those in like a sweeping motion because those hairs are, you know, fairly delicate. So you don't want to like buff too hard with them. You don't want them to break. And then with other powder brushes that I have that are goat hair or synthetic or whatever, you know, like I'll use like a buffing motion like this. But there's something about the hair length um, of this brush that makes me want to like whip it around. I think when I first reviewed for brushes, uh, at least a couple of months ago at this point, I was talking about whipping. I got so many funny comments from you guys, but yeah, I just love using this brush that way. I don't know, it's just, it, it also feels great. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to um, powder cheek products. I'm gonna go ahead and use brush number four. This is the angled cheek brush. This is probably my favorite brush out of the core collection only because I love the size of this brush and I love that it's angled. I feel like I don't have a lot of angled brushes in my collection and I don't feel like there's actually a lot out on the market. I have one from Surat that I absolutely love um, and I think I have one maybe from Hakuhodo. But that is it in terms of like a cheek brush. So I just love it. I love the angle of it. I love how soft the bristles feel and it's perfect if you want like a precise cheek application. So I'm gonna use my Tom Ford Soleil Glow Bronzer in Terra and I'm going to dip this brush in lightly. This is a very soft powder and it picks up a lot of product with just like one little tap. So I'm going to lightly sweep that 
into the hollows of my cheek and brush it around my temple area. This is also great for blush. It's also great for highlight. I think it's really great for any cheek product, um, but I wanna kinda demo the other brushes. So I'm going to move on. I'm gonna use the number five brush for blush. So um, like I've mentioned in the intro, you can use all of these brushes with cream or powder products. And when I first got the Natasha Denona Bloom palette, it has that like really deep raspberry uh, cream product. I decided to use this brush with it and it was absolutely perfect. So this can definitely be used with cream blush and obviously cream highlight, cream contour, cream bronzer, or anything. But I just wanted to mention that. I really, really like this with that Bloom palette. But today I did wanna demo this brush with the Lovegasm palette from Charlotte Tilbury. And the reason why I picked this is because these are that kind of baked gelée uh, formula, and sometimes I find that they're difficult to pick up. And I just wanted to demo that with brushes, even as soft as these, that this can pick up a texture like this. So I'm just going to run this over uh, this Glowgasm powder. And you saw I just grazed it over there a couple of times, picked up the product, beautifully and if you're to use like a soft synthetic brush on any of these powders you're going to find it very challenging to pick up enough product but these goat hairs make it very very easy to pick up this product and then i'm just going to grab a little bit of this color which is a little bit lighter and i'm going to pop that onto the apples of my cheeks this brush is also a great little buffing brush. I feel like if I've gone a little bit too heavy with my blush, I'll go in with this brush and kind of blend it out a little bit. And now for highlight, I'm gonna go ahead and use brush number 20. I am not generally a fan of fan brushes, no pun intended. I like brushes that can really kind of like burnish the highlight on, but I do know that this brush is typically used for highlight, and so I wanted to demonstrate that for you. Um, but I did also want to mention that uh, Refer was really kind enough in sending me um, home when I was in Toronto with a few of these uh, brushes, and so I had an extra one of the fan brush. So I decided to give it to a friend of mine who's, um, you know, really getting into makeup, and I thought it'd be great to get her feedback, kind of like a beginner, someone who's just like really getting into makeup, and she's loving this brush because she is someone that has not been, you know, used to wearing too many cheek products. Like she puts on a little bit of blush, but that's it. The whole bronzer, brontour, highlighting thing is a little bit new to her. So she started using this to kind of brontour her face and she loves it because of the light application. She's just so afraid of using too much, you know, because it's such a new technique for her that this has been perfect for giving her just a really, really light contour. So food for thought, if that is the position that you're in, if maybe you're someone that has always kind of been afraid of too heavy or too dramatic of a contour, a fan brush would be great for that. But I'm gonna go ahead and use it as um, a highlight brush today. And I've got my Tom Ford, what is this? The Radiant Perfecting Powder in Gilt Glow. And you can't really see the powder because it's white on white bristles, but let's just add it right here. And as wispy as these hairs are, it really picks up plenty of product. All right, so that is brush number 20, the fan brush. All right, so let's move on to the eye brushes. Um, I don't think I'll be able to demo all of them. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try, but there's a lot of great eye brushes and I don't think you need to use all of them to create an eye look, um, but I do wanna demo um, as many as I can for you. So we're gonna start with brush number 16. This is the larger blending brush. Let me just hold it up to brush number 15, which is a more traditionally sized blending brush. So you can see how oversized number 16 is. So I'm gonna start with 16 because I wanna lay down just you know a nice kind of nude color over my entire lid. So I've got my custom Viseart palette here. I'm gonna go into this matte shade here. And this is a shade from the Neutral Mattes palette. And because this brush has uh, quite a pronounced kind of like point to it, I really like using it almost like it's flat against my lid. And that way I feel like I can blend out a really nice large area. Next I'm gonna take brush number 15 and I'm gonna go into a transition shade. 
And I'm going to just add a little bit of dimension here. The bristles are soft. They blend really well. They're just a real joy to work with. Next, I'm going to take brush number one. This is from the Core Collection. It's like a flat shader, but it has fairly long bristles, so it keeps it nice and soft. It'll keep the application a little bit uh, softer than I think a lot of flat shader brushes. And I'm going to go into like a metallic chocolate brown shade and just add that to my outer corner. And then I love using this brush like along the edge of a shadow like this and just back and forth, just kind of like blending it out. Then I'm going to take brush number two. This is also from the Core Collection. And this is um, a denser, uh, stiffer kind of shader brush. So this is great for like metallic shades or shades that are a little bit like chunkier, um, that are a little bit harder to lay down. This is great, especially if you want to use them wet. But I'm going to go ahead and go into like a shimmery metallic shade dry with this brush and add that to the rest of my lid here. This is really great to like pack product on. And then I'll take the 16 brush. This is the first brush I use to like lay down um, that all over lid color. And I'll use this to blend out all the shadows once I've put them all down. And then let's go in with brush number three, which is a great, great pencil brush. I'm gonna go ahead and use this with a matte black and line my eyes. And I love this pencil brush because I find pencil brushes generally either to be too pokey um, or they're too soft. Very rarely are they like right in between like this one. And I generally like to use, you guys have seen me use this Esam T05 brush to like stamp liner on all the time. But this is a great alternative if I want um, like a slightly a smokier kind of look. The stamping is a very kind of like precise application, at least for me, a very precise application of liner. It's like if you really want to get it into the lash line. This is nice if I want like a softer, softer look. So the one um, eye brush that I wasn't able to demo is brush number 12. And this is the one that's like a domed, it's almost like a really big pencil brush. You could think of it that way, or it's a great smudger brush, uh, which I guess I could use now to smudge out my lower lash line. I have been using this brush for cream shadows. This is a really great cream shadow brush. Definitely recommend this brush for that purpose if you're into it. It has that right amount of stiffness to get into those cream shadows like the Chanel um, or the Chantecai, the ones that are potted, that are a little bit more dense, a little bit more putty-like, where you kind of have to like work to get the product on. Um, this also works great with those moussey kinds, like the Tom Ford or the Charlotte Tilbury. Um, you just kind of like dip it in gently and then you can blend it out really nicely. But this really is a great brush for cream shadows. So those are pretty much all of the brushes demonstrated. Let me go ahead and finish up my makeup and I'll be right back. All right, now that you've seen all the brushes in action, you've seen close-up shots of all of them, let's go ahead and talk about this Kickstarter campaign because it is, it is so exciting. So um, there's basically four pledge levels. So for all the pledges, the delivery date for these brushes is around mid-December. Um, again, all of the details are on the Kickstarter page. If I forget anything, it should be on there, but leave any questions you have below in the comment section. Also, don't forget to follow Refer on Instagram. They are the most responsive, responsive team ever. If you have any questions whatsoever, just DM them on Instagram and they will get right back to you. They're they're pretty amazing. <laughs> they're pretty amazing. So the first pledge is um, for $99, and I apologize, I'm looking over here because I have my um, laptop here with the page pulled up. I don't want to, I don't want to miss anything or misspeak. Um, but for $99 that you get the core collection, and that's at a 40% off retail. So after this Kickstarter closes, the core collection is going to be $168. So it's like a 40% off discount, which I think is amazing. So that's what you get for $99. Um, there's also a little bonus there. If you watch the video on Kickstarter, so I'm not going to spoil it for you, but if you watch the video on Kickstarter, they're going to let you know at the end um, how you can actually kind of customize this core collection. What I also want to mention is the packaging that they're going to be delivered in. So 
These refer boxes are so cool. So all the brushes come in here and you can use this as a little brush stand. And there is like just the slightest like magnet in there, which makes kind of closing up the box really easy. It just kind of slides closed, um, but they didn't make it too strong that it like sucks up all of your brushes or anything. So when you put them in there, it's not like um, they're gonna stick to the sides or anything like that. So anyway, so they're slightly magnetized and this is such a sturdy like cardboard box and it's great, it's light but you can go ahead and keep your brushes in here. And the reason why they made it kind of like a two-parter thing they heard from makeup artists is they like to keep their clean brushes in one. And then once they use them, they like to move them over to um, like a different container. So that's why they designed it this way. So this is what will be housing your brushes. Oh, I do also want to mention that they will ship anywhere in the world. So they'll ship internationally. So that's the pledge for $99. The next pledge level is $110. And that is for the Bespoke 5 collection. And with the Bespoke 5 collection, you can choose any three eye brushes and any two face brushes that you want from the collection. And so you're basically making like a bespoke brush collection for yourself, which I think is really, really amazing. So that's for $110. And then the next level is for $199. And this is 45% off of the future retail price. And so you can pick six of any eye brushes and four of any face brushes. And then the last level is for $285, which is 50% off of its future retail price. And that is basically all of the brushes, the core collection, the bespoke collection, and brush number 11, which I think is only available in this. I don't think this is a selection you can make um, in the bespoke collection for like face brushes. I don't think this is included, but again, all of the information will be on the Kickstarter page. So you get the five core brushes, the 10 bespoke brushes, which includes this, complimentary shipping, delivery by uh, mid-December. So that is like, just the general information for this Kickstarter campaign. Definitely check it out if you're interested. I will leave all the links down below. If you have any questions whatsoever, again, leave them below in the comment section. Reach out to Refer on Instagram. Like I said, they're incredibly responsive. Really, really nice guys. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.